Everybody scream. <laughs> it feels good. Hi, guys. <laughs> Everybody scream. <laughs> feels good. Feels good. Who sings that? Like CNC Music Factory or someone. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Or Robin S. Do you guys remember Robin S? No. Oh, not okay. at all. Guys, welcome. This is what we're doing today. Partners in Shine. This is our new show. Bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah, and um, if you don't know who we are, I'm Alexi Panos. I'm Preston Smiles. And the reason we're doing this is because we Richard! want... Richard! Yes! Rich, what's up? Larry's on. The reason we're doing this is because we want to have... Um, really opening, heart opening, mind opening, expansive conversations once a week with our amazing community and hopefully have conversations that matter and inspire and move us yes. to create some massive, beautiful changes in this world. Um, because that's why we're here. We're yeah. creators. We're here to explore and do all sorts of amazing things. And um, we hope to open something up for you guys. Elisa's on. She remembers Robin S. Amazing. I don't know who that is. Michaela, what? She had the short blonde hair? No. Come on. She had like the haircut every girl wanted back uh, in the 90s. Yep. Didn't, didn't <laughs> catch that Angelina's on. Natty's on. All right, cool. So we're going to get into the one. Yes. The one thing that leads to success that most people are missing. Yeah, that you just don't do. They just don't do it. Sam Lewis is in the building. Sam Lewis in the house. Sam Lewis so, in the house. So, um, Karina... You know what? Let's just give a little shout out before we even jump in. Like, how many? Where are you guys coming from? Where are you watching this video? Where well, are you hello there, currently Helen. at? If you're on the toilet, say I'm in Australia on, on the, the toilet. toilet. You gotta blow yourself Where up. Where are you at? Both ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> UPW looked great. Cool guys. Yeah, yeah Mike, Trish. what's up? Where are you guys Trish coming is from? On. James is on. Yeah, let us know where you're chiming in from. Dana's mm -hmm. on. UPW, dang, dang. for those of you who have, were following Jeez. our Instagram, hi from Australia, um, we were just at Tony Robbins UPW in San Jose. Yes, and it was yeah. amazing. Tony is a beautiful spirit and has such a presence, and he just reminded us that what's possible. Glenn, money is in the building. Vicky's in the building. Jamie in the building. What up? Yep. Why do we Georgie? say in the building? What if people aren't actually in buildings? They're not. They're actually in the airwaves. They are. That's true. <laughs> this is true. This a lot true. of a lot of Aussies in. Aussie, um, Aussie, Aussie. Make boy, sure boy, boy. you guys are going to the Bridge Method, Bridge Experience, the Bridge Experience in Australia. If you're in Australia or if you're in New Zealand, I just got to put that out there. www.bridgeexperience.com. Dot com. All right. All right, we're jumping you ready? in, guys. Let's do this. Um, yeah, Lila, Melvin in the house, yep. hometown. Um, cool. So we want to talk about the one thing that most people are totally missing and it is the key to mastery. It's the key to success. It's the key to just living a really full life. Preston, would you like to share this key with us? Uh huh. That key, <laughs> um, in our humble opinions is consistency is staying in the work. So many of us, so many Myself included, Alexi as well. In so many areas of our life, we we work hard to get to something. Yes. And then we get there, or even get a little bit of it, and then we stop. Then we chill. Yeah, exactly. And it's like we stop doing the thing, the very thing that made us successful in the first place. Yes. So it's like if you guys have ever gone on a diet and you like work your ass off, like running and eating well and like no alcohol, no sugar. You're like, I'm so disciplined. I'm going to lose this weight before my reunion or before the holiday or before this hot date. Yep. And you lose the weight. Then what happens? About a week after losing the weight, you're like, I look good. Yep. I look so good. Mm -hmm. I don't need to work out anymore. That's how good I look. <laughs> you know what's, what's interesting about that too? Another, another prime example of that where that happens at all the time is in relationship. Yep. You know, we work so hard to get the person. We work so hard to, to wine and dine and romance them and everybody's wearing their mask and everybody's, you know, got their, their boobies squeezed together and the dudes are pretending like they have more money than they have. And, I never had my boobs yeah. squeezed together. Well, but you know what I'm saying. Everybody's <laughs> putting their best foot forward. True. <laughs> and you get in a relationship and everybody's pumped up for like the first five, six months. And then we stop doing the things that attracted yeah. the person to us in the first place. And then we wonder why they left. 
or cheated or started, uh, you know, watching more football and staying out a little later and yeah, all of or, these things. Or we wonder why there's no rom romance or excitement or why the passion has worn off. It's because we're not playing the game like we used to. And, you know, novelty, human beings love novelty. We love newness. We love to switch it up. We love variety. But we don't get that we're the creator of the variety everywhere we go. So it's not about, okay, well, I need to get variety outside of myself. Thank you. That light was so bright. I looked like I was a ghost. Better. Got you. Hi. Take care of my boo. See, I did Thanks, it. Thanks, baby. What up, Brad? Thanks, baby. Josh Pearson, I saw you. Um, so yeah, so a lot of us think that we have to get novelty outside of ourselves. So we'll ditch the old routine or the old person or the old job in search of something new outside of ourselves. But really the newness and that novelty comes from within us. Mm -hmm. If we're willing to show up the same way with the same enthusiasm and yes. the same get it done attitude as we did in the beginning. Yes. And what helps that is reminding ourselves to have a beginner's mindset. You know, what kills most people's careers, relationships, and things of that nature is this, this idea of familiarity. You know, we, we think we know it. So in the moment we think we know it, oh, I got that. Oh, oh yeah. I already read that book. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Social media, yeah, I got that. Uh, you know, uh, my career, yeah, yeah. I'm in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Not remembering that um, life is always ebbing and flowing. It's always moving up, down, left, right. It's always in flow, constantly flowing. And if we keep a beginner's mindset when approaching this fantastic thing called life that is not fair in the way that we would deem fair, then every time we show up to said relationship, said job. career, job, whatever you want to call it, um, mother, father, then we're seeing it with new eyes. And a lot of people think that that's not possible, but I'm telling you right now, it is absolutely possible. Yeah. I, I'm falling in love with her every day. That's Today, right. literally 30 minutes ago, I was busting up laughing about some of her quirks. <laughs> Yesterday, I said, I love when you get so cocky. She gets cocky about her feet because she thinks her feet are pretty. I, and they I look like little Miss cocky. Piggy. They look no, like they little piggy feet. My feet are incredible. Right. Okay? I would say show them, but I'm not going to go there. I'm going I'm to show them. Show them. She has little piggy feet. No, I and don't. she thinks that she's like the foot model of the world. I used to be a foot model. They are, no. Look how cute those are. I don't Look at know. The arch. No. I got a good arch in there. Look the, at that. Oh. Uh -uh. oh. So she's showing you her good angle. You just touched my head. Um, the point is, is that there's something new to discover and uh, a newness you can bring to, to your relationships every day. Yeah. Like literally the world is fantastic and it's so beautiful and it's, 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 you know, you can put on those road col rose colored glasses, even in the, in the height of this political conversation that, that we're all in the and, madness. and we can see, we can see the, the silver lining in the whole thing yeah. and see the beauty of it when we come from, um, all I know is that I don't know. Yeah, and guys, the reason this is really important is because, you know, she has good feet. She's got Thank you. Feet. At least somebody can see. We need to check your eyes. I no, think. she's super cocky. She needs to be brought down. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> the reason why this is so important is because, as most of you know, we are in the field of personal development and training people and supporting people and creating the container for breakthroughs. And what we see so often, especially in the personal development self-help world, is people buy a book, they take a course, they go to a workshop, and then they think that everything is supposed I'm done. to be fixed. I'm done. I'm finished. Oh my God, I did the work. And now I'm like totally enlightened. Yes. And they go around and they tell all their friends. Forgiveness? Yeah, I did that thing. Oh yeah, like. I forgave my dad. Going through the past, like done that, did that. Like I did a process five years ago in this workshop and I'm so good. Uh-huh. And what we don't get is that we're always a work in progress. And it is the master who shows up again and again and again and again. Blah. To fine tune the instrument. Mm. It's Kobe. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's Kobe Bryant. It's, um, it's Michael Einstein. Jordan. It's, it's, it's the people literally who showed up every single day to practice and get better and just change one slight small thing. And it's not about changing because we're broken. It's about elevating our game and rising into excellence and rising into outstanding. That's the biggest thing. And I think a lot of people are... They want the quick thing, like, oh, let me just get up this mountain. Let me just forgive that guy who dicked me over. Forgive my parents, and then I'm done. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. And the problem with that attitude is that we miss 
we totally miss the gifts and the breakthroughs that come when you keep diving deeper. Mm -hmm. Because if we think there's a limit to this thing called us, mm -hmm. I mean, we're out of our minds. Because we are so much more than we can even fully comprehend at this point. We are so much deeper than we can even fully comprehend. And if our learning stops, our training stops, mm -hmm. then our growth stops. Mm -hmm. And when we stop growing, we die. We die. That's, that's why our mirror neurons fire off when we see kids. You know, you ever notice that when you see kids and they're playing and they're just, everything is new for them. They're, they're so excited. They're, they're so curious. When we see them, our mirror neurons fire off because there's a part of all of us that still, is still has that within our own selves. There's a part of all of us that is still innocent, that hasn't been touched and hasn't been jaded in the way that um, our ego mind, wound itself, shows up. And the work, especially in our work, is to bring an awareness to that ego mind, bring an awareness to that wound itself, notice it, meet it with love and, and appreciation, and then choose anew, choose from the higher self. And the higher self is always curious, always learning, always in process, always in the practice, because life is a practice. Whatever you practice more of, you get more of, and mm. that's, that's the game. And that is the game. And I wanna talk about that too, because a bunch of people, and we've been in this conversation with a lot of our friends, we have a lot of community who's in this work somehow. They teach success, they teach leadership, they teach health and fitness, they teach personal development, all sorts of stuff. And it's so interesting because as a leader in whatever field you're in, if you're in sales, if you're a parent, um, if you've got a killer job, if you work at the tanning salon down the street, I don't care where you work, I believe that every single person is leading somebody else. Oh, yeah. We're, We're always leaders. standing as a leader. And now, when you're leading, it's your responsibility to train in what you're, what you're teaching. And Preston and I were talking about this yesterday, that a lot of people who are training and leading are not sustaining the work. They're not sustaining the work off the field. They're not being the space and the embodiment of what they're training people to do. And if you cannot sustain the work, you cannot train the work. Yes. And that's a big, big thing that we want people to get. Here's, here's an interesting thing about that as well. Most of those people, and we know this, remember, you spot it, you got it, right? And so we know this because we know this within ourselves as well. Okay. A lot of people are trying to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's showing up the way it is, because they're trying to get significance. They're trying to get famous. They're trying to be seen as something. They're positioning themselves. So they're reading as much as possible, doing all the workshops as much as possible, so they can get to the place and then stop. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that has supported us, which is the reason why we even pick the subject, is remembering that the work never stops. Ever. That we all have to do our own push-ups. And the gift is in, yes, the muscles that come out of those push-ups, but also just the process of what, where you have to go. How many of you guys have ever, and you know this happens to all of us, if you ever had a trainer or just worked out yourself, you say, I'm gonna do 10 reps. And you get to, number seven and you're dying and you are dead and you want to give up and your friend or the trainer or somebody says give me five more four more whatever it is and you can do it like that just that process alone we're in a process of up leveling everything in our space yeah when it comes to us and you know what that's what that's calling out you know it, it's i won't say it's painful it's a challenge <laughs> in our i'll speak for me it's a challenge um for me to step into what I'm stepping into because it's causing me to face off with particular parts that I have not been facing off with mm. most of my life. And so I can either try to hurry up and get through that so I can get there or I can honor the whole thing and understand that it is one meditation that I can, that I can meditate on the problem or I can meditate on the promise. And the promise is, is that life is ever abounding. It's always flowing, it's always beautiful if we choose to see the beauty. I love that. I, I know for me, I'll speak from my space of, I was a big get there person in the past. Like I was a big, I'll do anything to get mm -hmm. there, to get the result, to get the goal, to get the thing crossed off my list, to have that achievement, that accomplishment to make me feel better, feel more worthy about myself. And when I recognized that pattern in my life, I got really clear that I had missed the actual learning. Like I was learning a lot and consuming a lot and able to, to do a lot 
in the eyes of the world, but I was missing the learning. And the learning is that it's not getting to the goal. It's not getting to the top of the mountain. It's who I become in the process of having to get to that goal, Mm -hmm. having to get to that result, having to stretch myself, you know, above and beyond what's comfortable for me in order to become the thing that I say I want to become. And this is the secret. This is the secret. Everyone wants the secret to success. It's, it's two things really. It's one, constantly being in the work and constantly being open to the work and constantly getting that all you know is you know nothing, emptying that cup so you can fill it back up and empty it and fill uh. it back up and empty it and fill uh. it back up. Gotcha. And then second part is, is being so present to the here and now, the journey, the who am I becoming in the process of stretching myself towards this goal, towards this mountain, mm-hmm. because that's life. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's the essence. That's mm-hmm. the beauty. That's the magic of life. But so many of us are missing it because we're so focused on this, the outcome. And what happens is we get to the outcome, we get to the mountain and we get there and we're like, okay, I'm here. I'm here. <gasps> I'm here. It feels really good for like, maybe a month tops if you're lucky probably more likely like a couple days in a week you're there you're celebrating you're calling your friends made it to the mountain made it to the mountain made it to the mountain and then depression of success sits in and it sets in because all of a sudden we recognize that we don't know who the heck we are we don't know who the heck we are and what we want and what we're focused on because we were so future sighted that we miss the here and now Mm -hmm. So it's about having that balance of like, yes, have a vision. Yes, have a vision that pulls you, that moves you forward, but also be present to the magic and the gift that life is right now. And we're sitting in the gift. And this is the only thing that's real. Yes, we can vision and and forecast, but this is real. This is real. And we don't get to miss stuff like this Mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like this. This is real. And we get to honor that. (laughs) All right. Let's take a few comments. Um, Any of you guys... Is there anything anybody wants to discuss or something you guys are being with yeah, that you'd like question. to dive into? If you got so, a Q, we maybe have an A. Uh-huh. Maybe. Hit that Q. Hit that Q. Hit that Q. We love all the little hearts, too. Yeah, this the is... hearts make us happy. Uh-huh. A little dopamine yeah. hit. Just bing, bing, bing. Angie, what up, girl? Yeah. I saw Angie had this, like, flower picture thing that I saw. Oh, It's very cute. Uh, did anyone else imagine her doing... The juju dance when she did... what? What's the juju dance? When she did her hands like that. <laughs> Suavemente. I don't know what the juju did. Besame. Eli. Eli. What up, Eli? So, um, yeah. So I have a question for you, Preston. Uh-huh. Since you guys don't have questions, I got a question for him. And what event did you guys meet? Yes, which, what's your Oh, question? someone asked this question. Can you discuss how to cope with anxiety <gasps> yes! or depression? Anxiety. Can I handle anxiety? Who, who asked that? Yes, I think we can handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I start? Of course you can. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, is- so coming up from, uh, coming from a person who used to suffer with a lot of anxiety, anxiety to me, for me, has been all about living in this future idea of either what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. So anxiety is created when we're in the present moment worrying about a future that doesn't exist yet. And we feel anxious about it because the future is uncertain. So if there's uncertainty, that anxiety pulls up because anxiety is a feeling that we can trust. At least we know, even though it feels uncomfortable, at least we know it's ours and we can trust it. So it creates this field of certainty within us. Now, how I work with anxiety within myself, whenever I feel it bubbling up to the surface, I literally, it's so easy, take a deep breath, bring myself to present moment awareness, tap into what's around me, okay, I'm in this room, here's the smells, here's the sights, here's the sounds. I literally get so present that the anxiety goes away because I'm not thinking about that future that doesn't exist yet. I'm thinking about the present moment, the thing that's tangible and real and concrete and certain right in front of me. And really our bodies, our minds, our hearts are craving certainty. So when we're out in that anxious and worried space, you want to do something that makes you feel certain. So doing something that brings you back into your body, breathing, working out, taking a walk, being with nature, being with someone you love. Mm -hmm. Just get really present and get certain in your presence and what's real and ground yourself in that. And that's how I handle anxiety. Nailed it. Because Um, you got depression. um, Hold on. There was a couple of... Okay. On the journey. 
when things get tough, how do you stay present in that? In the depth of horror. Yeah. Um, so, a couple things. One, I live from the personal understanding that there are no mistakes in God. That everything that is, is because it is intended here. Every, every hair in my head, every speckle in my beard, all of it is intended here. Even the stuff that we don't want to look at. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I've had friends who've been shot in the head. I've had, I have a friend, and I didn't even tell her this, I just sent money to jail, to the LA County Jail for one of my friends who's in jail, again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've seen people die with their brains splattered on the ground. And so those are, would be considered horrors. All of those things would be tough things to be with. And for me, um, I believe that life is a series of choices. And when it's all said and done, all roads lead to the same place. Mm. And sometimes we take roads based on our choices, based on the places we were raised in the environment, um, doesn't mean we're a victim to them, it just means those things happen. Um, sometimes we make choices, unconscious choices, that lead to consequences. And But I do believe that everybody, the moment you take that first breath, you also say yes to that last breath, mm -hmm. which is um, something a mentor said it to us once, um, Betty you Sproul. Say, yes. Yeah, when you say yes to life, you say le yes to death. And so it would be nice for all of us to go out in our sleep, but um, Scout, that is not the case for most people. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's how I, I deal with it. Yeah, I'd love to, Danny just asked a question, is depression a sickness or a mindset? Um, neither of us are physicians. Mm -mm. Um, so, you know, this is our opinion and our humble opinion at that. Um, depression. There's depression, the mood, and then there's depression, the clinical... Well, here's, here's my take on it. My take on it is this, and I, I do know people who have been clinically depressed, um, who have used nutrition and um, energy and mindset to pull themselves out of it. I know people who are clinically depressed who believe that it's a lifelong sentence and they can't pull themselves out of it. So mm -hmm. there, there is something that legitimately happens in the brain where there's certain chemicals that are missing, there's certain chemicals that maybe we need more of. Um, <laughs> And that being said, current science and current neuroscience is proving that we are actually able to rewire our brain and it's called epigenetics and, and epi, epibiology. We can actually rise above our biology. Um, if you guys want a really good book on this, read The Biology of Belief and also read The Placebo Effect. And this talks about, both these books talk about how we are literally creating our reality based on our mindset, based on our thoughts, based on our state, our body, our movements, our breath, our nutrition. Everything is the environment. Everything. It all comes together. Not one. It's not just health and nutrition. It's not just mindset. It's not just this or that. It's all of it coming together creates an environment for dis-ease or an environment for health mm -hmm. and sustainability. And if you look at nature, if you go out in nature, you can see that the environment is really everything. If you have plants at home, we've got a ton of plants in our place, and most of our plants are doing pretty well. There's one plant, you know which one I'm talking about, mm -hmm. on the table, that is just like not working. And it's the environment for that plant. It's not the right environment for that plant. So we get to get really honest because I think a lot of humans aren't willing to make sacrifices in and the things they love. You know, they want to sit in front of the TV five hours a day and wonder why they're depressed. Mm -hmm. They want to eat shitty foods like sugar and drink alcohol and have highly acidic bodies and wonder why they don't feel good or why they have illness or disease. They want to keep people around them that are pulling them down and wonder why life doesn't feel so good. Well, it's a culmination of our environment. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have a kick-ass life, you better get really damn serious about your environment and get disciplined to have the environment for your body, mind, and spirit that lends to what feels good for you. And you know when you feel off. You know when you feel off. And I often think that depression, you know, we work with thousands of people from all over the globe who have been through crazy traumas, like stuff that you, you wouldn't even want to hear. It's so crazy. And I think often what happens is depression comes up 
because people aren't willing to deal with their hurt and their pain and their traumas. So what happens, we stuff it down, we stuff it down, more hurt, traumas come up, stuff it down, stuff it down, and all that hurt, all that pain is like, it's like a beast. And I use this metaphor today in Soul School in a video. It's like an animal inside of us, locked in a cage that's trying to get out. And maybe it's surfacing as anger or rage, or maybe it's surfacing as sadness and depression, but it's this animal that's fighting to get out. And if we don't let that animal out, what happens is that animal takes over and, and we start believing that we are that animal. We start believing that we have no control over our emotions. When we actually do, we just have to let it out. We have to heal. Mm -hmm. We have to heal ourselves. So emotions come up for us to heal, not for us to stuff them down. And so all of that and one would at, a really good question to ask oneself who is dealing and being with uh, what they would deem depression is what's the payoff I get from yeah. being depressed? Because a lot of times, mm, people um, have stories, you know, I'm, sob stories, sad stories, you know, my father was never there for me, and this happened and that happened, and my mother beat me when I was 12, and we hold on to these things because we get so much sympathy and, and our friends, and it, and it makes it okay for us to be fucking up in our lives, and it just, we get, there's a payoff yeah. For holding on to the depression, for holding on to the sadness, for holding on to the anger. Mm -hmm. And so asking oneself, what's the payoff? What do I get from this? Bringing a conscious awareness mm. to this, this conversation. You know, in the Bible, it says, it, it, it is done unto you as you believe. Um, what's the guy's name? Confucius said, uh, those who said he... Oh, right. Those who say you can or you can't yeah, are, are both, both right. right. Mm -hmm. So like that... Both of those statements to me point to, okay, if you if you are holding on to depression, the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, whatever name is, well, yes, yeah, yes, and okay, perfect, I'm depressed. got it, okay, so you so you are, and, and so, so it, it is. is, yeah. Uh, Lily just asked something. What up, Lily? She's part of Soul School. Mm -hmm. um, I I notice when things don't go according to expectations, I just lose the momentum and don't want to do what I planned anymore. Happens so many times when I try to make videos. How do I shift this? So this is interesting to me because um, I think a lot of what stops a lot of people is not time, it's not money, it's not energy, it's fear. Mm -hmm. It's fear. We're afraid that if we say yes and step into this thing that we know is kind of a next step for us and it's going to pull us out of our comfort zone, the minute we say yes to that, we also say yes to the unexpected. Mm -hmm. We say yes to maybe people posting mean comments yeah. or people judging you. We <laughs> say yes to the possibility of people smiling in your face and saying, oh, I loved your video, then behind your back going, oh my God, you see that video that Lily put up? I can't believe it. Uh -huh. The minute we say yes to anything that's uncertain, we say yes to the uncertain good and the uncertain bad. Yes. Good and bad, of course, in parentheses um, or quotes. So I think what we get to do is really look at what is the main fear that's stopping you? Why are you so afraid of it? And what's the worst possible thing that could happen because often when we pull out the fear from our body and we like throw it on the table and we look at it the worst possible case scenario isn't actually that bad and the best possible case scenario yeah. far outweighs the worst possible case scenario almost all the time yes and lily to you and anybody else who has something on their heart that is calling them forward in that way um one of the things that works for me and works for alexi as well is reminding ourselves that it's not about us yeah when, when you make it about you, it's so easy to make excuses. It's so easy so to hide out. So easy. But the moment it becomes so about this message and about supporting humanity and reminding people of their truth and their greatness through a medium called video, through mm. through personal conversation, through whatever is necessary, whatever it takes. So that, for me, <laughs> that's it. Whatever it takes. And so I just want to chime in real quick because. Yeah. We're in the example of this right now. We yeah. are exhausted. Yep. Like, straight up exhausted. We have been going nonstop for God knows how long. Uh -huh. All the year, pretty much. And <laughs> we just got home last night at like 1 o'clock in the morning from Tony Robbins. We're so beat. We had a full day of work. Just had dinner with my mom who's in town. And then we came home and it's like, alright, let's do this live. Now, if we made it about us, 
We would have canceled the live. We'll be on Netflix right now. We'll be on Netflix finishing up Narcos because, you know, we got one more episode left. So (laughs) we would have been on that that Narcos game and Netflix way earlier. But now we're here and, Mm -hmm. and we're here not for us. We're here for to serve and we're here for a message that we know is so much bigger than us so as you're saying Mm -hmm. that i'm sitting here laughing because here's the funny thing i was tired before we did this yeah and now i'm energized energized always always i'm you know we got off a plane um from africa 40 hours of travel went straight on stage in san diego for thrive an event that you guys should all be at and people are like, aren't you guys exhausted? Yes, I was absolutely exhausted before stepping on that stage. The minute I got on stage, mm-hmm. exhaustion by focus, service. Here we go. Yep. So, yeah. You want to read that? Yeah. Peter says, I see myself using social media insecurely at times. Refreshing to see who like my pics. Generally wasting too much time. Mm-hmm. Is, it an un- uh, is it a healthy attachment that affects how I interact with people? Give gives me anxiety. You know it's not healthy. Mm-hmm. We don't even need to address that, but but because you, you already know, Peter, you absolutely already yeah, know yeah. that's not working for you. Yeah. And so, what you need to potentially do, this is just you know, you don't have to take this as truth, is um, remove yourself until you yeah. can actually be with it. And so, does it own you or do you the, own it? Exactly. And right now, it has you. Yeah. And so, as long as it has you, um, and you're playing into it. First of all, we get to all stop pretending like we don't know what's best for us. There's so much common sense that happens that we pretend like it's not there. The truth of the matter is, is like, okay, you're addicted to social media and like, or addicted to And you're not alone, by the way, Peter. Or addicted to the, the The, the dopamine hit. hit. The hit of, oh my God, I got to like, oh my God, I got to comment. And you're not alone. Thank you for having the courage to ask that because you are not alone. I guarantee you 90% of the people even on this live have had that experience at some point. I know Mm -hmm. I have, and I had to quickly get out of that. And now, you know, I post something and it's like, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Scout, is that how you say your name? Scout wrote, um, this is the same guy who asked about depression. So what if you're living the mindset of positivity and success and and it's just not working? Okay, Mm. so here's what I'll say about that as well. And I'm sure Alexi will have a lot to say as well. just because you read positive books and do things and have follow Instagram accounts that that say that doesn't mean that there's a lot that you aren't facing off with. So there's some people, and I'm not saying this is you, bud, but I know it's been me, so I know I can speak to it. And me. Some people are delusional. And we get in these little bubbles and we think everything needs to be positive and happy and all of those stuff. And that's what's causing the pain. The pain. If you just allowed the anger, the pure rage that needs to come out of you to come out. If you allowed yourself to go into a primal scream and let yourself go there. You may find that the whole thing just dissipates. But because you're so delusional, not you, I'm just saying people. Because we're so delusional. That we think we need to be positive all the time and it needs to be rainbows. That's called a spiritual bypass. Yep, and that shit does not work. Because guess what? Those emotions come up. They come up and they will find you again and again and again. If any of out you, any of their out you, out, if any of they you out, out there, there, my brain's moving faster than my lips are. <laughs> if any of you out there can relate to this where something happens, emotions come up, you think you deal with them. But then you move on, you move on, six months down the road, something happens again, same emotion, different different scenario, mm-hmm. comes up, and you're like, oh shit, this thing again? I thought I was over that. Mm-hmm. And you do something, you stuff it down, say, oh, I'm good, fuck him, moving on. That emotion will keep surfacing until you face off with it. Mm-hmm. And and facing off with it doesn't mean complaining about it and talking about it to all your friends. Well, oh, I have this and this person did this. It's about taking full responsibility, not being the victim and owning your emotions and allowing your emotions to experience and complete themselves. Yep. Because that's what our emotions are here to do. They're like... Um, I have a video where I talk about the fire alarm. Mm-hmm. Right? So a lot of us... We've got fire alarms in our house. And if you guys have ever cooked and had something be a little too steamy, you know what happens. The fire alarm goes off, right? So imagine the fire alarm is going off. Those are your emotions. Yeah, it's loud. It's loud. It's annoying. All you want to do is stop the noise. So what do you do? You pull out the batteries. 
ah, oh, noise is gone. For a brief moment, you feel a bit of relief. But guess what? There's still a fire somewhere in your house. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to ignore it and just take the batteries out and not listen to the sound, the annoying emotions anymore. Yeah. Goodbye emotions. Or you can face the fire and put it out and not have to hear the alarm anymore. That's how we deal with it. We face the fire and we put it out. Yes. And, Scout, what you resist persists. Mm -hmm. And so... It may be really hard and challenging for you to get rid of depression because you're trying to get rid of depression by being super positive. The moment, the moment we relax into that river, into that flow, to that forever unfolding and meet depression, meet sadness. And I'm doing those quotes there for the people who you know who the quotes are there for. Yeah. Um, when we meet that with love and compassion and notice it, but don't, don't associate ourselves with it. One of the biggest game changers for both of us has been noticing life lifing and not attaching ourselves to the idea that that's us. Because yeah. otherwise, I would think that I was crazy as I am crazy. He's but, crazy. But I would think I was crazy <laughs> as hell if I actually listened and thought that the thoughts that come through were you. Were me. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. I would be straight bonkers. Sometimes... <laughs> The thought comes up, drive your car straight into a wall. Like that thought passes yeah. sometimes. Like just wild stuff. But I know that's not me. That's just the conscious mind flowing. It's, it's just thoughts. And I just notice them and release them. Because I'm not in resistance to them. Try releasing. Try, try just for one month. Just say, I'm going to play with the word surrender. I release, I surrender. Or even try like laughing at them, like mm -hmm. noticing them and not laughing at them in a way like, oh, they're so stupid, but wow, look at that. Yep, trying look to get Look at what it. I just thought. Like I, sabotaging thoughts will come up in my sphere and I look and I'm like, really? Wow, look at what I'm trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. Look at what my subconscious four-year-old self is trying to do. It's trying mm -hmm. to sabotage my relationship. <laughs> it's trying to keep me safe by having me pull away and shrink. Isn't that interesting? My four-year-old self is running the show right now, not my 33-year-old self. And we can kind of laugh at it and like take ourselves out of it and get that we're not it. Giving ourselves that objective perspective really helps. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Let's read this person because she has a uh, interesting Yeah, Jesse says, don't believe you have truly experienced horror on a daily basis. Not much to do with choice. Sure, choice of coming into this life, but not as simple as living it. Blessings. How hey, about Victor Franco? Yeah, so Victor Franco, uh, and Jesse, thank you for that. Thank you for your comment. Yes, thank um, you. Here's why this is really awesome. A lot of us who live in a, in a pretty awesome and safe and blessed environment, we look at tragedies happening in the world and our heart hurts, like we're totally in that space. And then we hear phrases like, your thoughts create your reality, um, your outlook determines your outcome. And we say, how can that be true? How can these people, like how these poor kids and these poor children and these poor women, mm -hmm. and yes, yes. And if you read books of triumph, if you read books of the human spirit, uh, biographies, autobiographies of people who have been in absolute horror. The story of Viktor Frankl, A Man's Search for Meaning, I recommend highly, both of us do, that every single human being out there read it because if you've ever had an excuse about your life, if you've ever wanted to play the victim about your life, try being in a Nazi death, death camp. Try losing and seeing all, your entire family killed around you. And then, yeah. after all of that, seeing death on a daily basis, including your entire family. And then after that, still choosing to see the gift of life. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, we can look at that and say, oh, that's bullshit. But when you read his words from his, from his hand onto the page, when you read his words, you get that the human spirit is so much bigger Absolutely. than this small reality. Including my have. ancestors who came over on that boat and got beat to death over and over and over again. Horror, life, is all relative. Mm -hmm. What I call her, you, you know, the, the kid, Robin Williams, Tony Robbins spoke about this at yeah. UPW. Robin Williams experienced horror and he had quote unquote everything. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we even putting that up against? Yeah. So your judgment, your, your, and I'm so grateful that you put that in quotes because I, I think you get it. Horror is up to the behind, the eye of the beholder. Yeah, it's all right. And we have just a month ago, was it even a month ago, a couple weeks ago, we're in Tanzania, 
watching kids drink water out of a feces infested infested river yeah and they were the happiest kids we've ever met yeah it's it's all a matter of your outlook it really is you know i think a lot Lessons. of people are are wealthy in their heart and they may not be wealthy in the world they may have lost family members they may have gone through hell and back and sometimes those are the people who are most grateful sometimes those are the people who have the best perspective of life because they've come so close to life mm -hmm. because life isn't just the beautiful stuff life is the horror it's all of it and and I think we get it twisted in our human concept where we think that life is supposed to be all good and you hear it all the time I don't know why this happened to me I'm such a good person I don't know why I lost my my mother I'm such a good person I don't know why this happened they were such good people they're just children life is impartial unfortunately you know as much as we'd love for life to just be rainbows and butterflies would we really because then there's no contrast contrast is the thing that makes life really precious and makes life really beautiful because we only know beauty because we know pain we only know light because we know dark so we have to stop making dark and pain bad because it's all life all of it you say yes to life you say yes to death and we make death bad just like we make pain bad just like we make emotions and anger bad just like we make suffering bad it's all life and we're all life and we get to honor all parts of ourselves yeah what she said. Let's take a couple questions and then we're going to get out of here. Um, Jamie, Jamie has written a couple times, so let's... Yep. How do you stop feeling lost and confused about what you want out of life? I've lost interest in my life goals. Hmm. Do you want to take that one? Sure. We'll both take it. Um, Jamie, what you resist persists. And so um, I would remind you that... Um, or ask you, be in the question... What am I comparing this to? Mm -hmm. What should, what expectation do I have around what my goals and life should be looking like? Because if you take yourself out of, oh, you know, and we've all been there. Okay, so I'm in school and my whole, the whole time I've been in school, I've been hearing that you get, you get good grades, you get into college, right? So my friends and I heard that quite a bit. And, you know, I got into college and some of my friends didn't. And because they had that programmed into their brain, that expectation, that should, that I'm only of value to society if I go to college. Hmm. When I went to college and they didn't get in and they didn't go because they didn't have the money or they didn't have the grades or whatever the case may be, they decided to join a gang. And now some of those friends are in jail and some of them are strung out on heroin. And I'm not saying that those are, they are without free choice and free will and that they're just victims or anything of that nature, but just pulling the thing apart and taking another look at why you think you need to have some big audacious goal. Like if that's not your dharma, if that's not what you came here to do, maybe stop following Instagram accounts and watching things that have you believing that that is the case. Because it's not a matter of becoming, it's a matter of revealing. Revealing what's already here. And what's already here, Jamie, is you probably have a lot of things that, I mean, you have goals every day. You have goals to get up, you have goals to yeah. eat, you have goals to talk to your mom, you have goals to talk to your wife, your girlfriend, whatever the case may be. And so if you stopped looking at it from the standpoint of, and this perspective is everything, out, outlook determines outcome. Mm -hmm. Outlook determines outcome. So if you change the perspective, that bird's eye view, if you fly up here and go, oh, I'm having this experience because I'm viewing it through the filter of I should be. Mm. I should be like fill in the blank. I should be like Grant Cardone. I should be like Ty Lopez. I should be, and I'm just saying this for because they're in our industry, or I get to be like Preston Smiles. I choose to be Alexi Panos. Mm -hmm. Two different perspectives. Yeah, I want to add to that too. I think what, what it really comes down to, anyone who's feeling any sort of suffering in your life, um, especially when it comes to vision and goal and like feeling like you're just not where you want to be, it's a matter of alignment. And I think when we're out of alignment with our true selves, our, our soul self, our soul signature, when we're out of alignment with that, we're always going to feel off. And when we're out of alignment from that, we start looking to other people mm -hmm. to feel like we're aligned to something. Like, oh, Preston Smiles, let me align to him. Oh, Grant Cardone, let me align to him. Versus, hey, come back here. Come back here. It's not a matter of becoming. It's a matter of revealing. So it's really a matter of revealing the alignment within your true self and really coming to terms with what success looks like for you. You know, for a lot of people, success looks like 
having a family and being a really good citizen and being an awesome human being and smiling every day and giving love and sharing love and being love. And for a lot of people, that's all they need to feel successful. For some people, they think they need the big life, the big car, the big whatever to feel successful. But when they really get it, when you really get it, it's it's alignment. It's truly alignment, and that's what it all comes down to. Um, this guy said, um, oh, that's Scott again. Okay, let's read another one. Uh, Uswege, yes. Uswege. Jenna, what up? A couple more guys. Yep. Alex said, how can I get better as a young man before finding my spouse? What can I be doing to work on me before looking for the one? Ah. You want to take that? Yeah. We do a quick one. Hey, bud, just um, just keep playing and exploring. Keep messing up and challenging yourself. And um, I think the best thing anybody, anybody at any point, but especially young, is to get in the habit of asking yourself, what does my authentic self choose now? Yeah. Not the self that is... Um, you know, been watching the Kardashians for too long. Not the self that is listening to Future and Drake and these different people who have me believing that I need to be um, having sex with a bunch of women and doing drugs and et cetera, et cetera. So like, uh, staying in the question of like, if, if, if I was a leader, if I was choosing to be a leader in my life right now, what would I choose? Mm. Yeah, I wanna add to that too, I think, the best work anyone can do on themselves before entering into a deep relationship mm -hmm. is really handle your, your past. Like really face off with your past, face off with your limiting beliefs, especially around the, the sex that you're attracted to. So if you've got limiting beliefs and stories around men or around women, deal with it. Face off with that because if you don't, it will come to the surface in your relationship and you'll get to face off with it there. But how amazing would it be to have a consciousness and an awareness around your stories that you're bringing to the table so you don't project that onto your person? Absolutely. Jenna is on, by the way. Jenna did her unicorn shoot the other day. It looks so good. Right, three things already. Awesome, Yosef. 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 You guys hey. are awesome. Jamie. I love you, Jamie. Okay, guys, we're going to get out of here. Wait, we're... what success? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, what's this? Uh, duh, duh, duh. Hold on, I see a question. B, what happens if you have been so lucky in one area of your life but struggling for years with the other? Is there a choice? First one being what you said, deep relationships, love. There's always a choice. Yes. Love. And always a choice. I, I, we don't necessarily believe in luck. And if there's one, if there's ever one case that is outside of, back to the, the woman who said, horror and we were talking about Viktor Franco. So if Viktor Franco can do it, that means all of society can. Every single right? So person. if you can have luck, which is not luck, it's just you have a belief that it's possible in one area of your life, then you can then shift the belief, shift your language, shift your actions, mm -hmm. and then have the same, not the same, but favoring results in another area. Mm -hmm. If it's possible here, it's possible there. Period. Point blank. Yeah. So and I get it. This is not an easy thing to take on at first. I'm in it right now with systems and structure and all of that <laughs> stuff. You know, I've had the story for so long. I can create content. I can get with people. I love people. I can talk to people. I can dive in with people, right? That's a belief I have. It's strong. I have it with conviction. I use my words, my actions, everything behind that. I can get to people. I can be with people powerfully, anybody. A limiting belief I have had in the past, I'm not claiming it now, not in this now moment, was um, I'm not very structured. And because I was in special education and because I, I wasn't as normal as all the other kids and because I have dyslexia and all of that stuff, that I'm not structured and therefore I'm not um, built to be a businessman in this particular way, right? But if I can do it here, then it can be done here. And so it's a little uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. Right where I'm, where I'm navigating into right now, but I know that that's a part of the process. And either I can, like I said earlier, try to skip the process and get the quick fix and shoot up real quick. And now I'm good. Or I can just be in the process yeah. and watch myself forever unfold. Yeah, and B, I want to add to that too. You know, you're a success in one area of your life and kicking butt because you prioritize it. Yep. You care about it, you prioritize about it, you prioritize it, you put all your energy and your effort into it, you pour yourself into it 
And that's great. So guess what? You have a model of what works and now just apply that to whatever area that you want success in. Focus on it, pour your energy into it, love on it, learn about it, deep dive into it. Whatever you're doing in the area of relationships that's working, move that to your finances or to your health or to whatever area that's maybe not working so well. Because we all are successful in some area of our life and we wonder why we don't have that same success in other areas. It's because we're not applying the same amount of energy and effort. And again, this goes back to full circle moment. The one thing that creates a successful life that most people aren't doing, they're not consistent in their actions Boom. towards success. That's my boom. So <laughs> like if you really want success in whatever area is lacking, be consistent, show up every day, show that area that you are persistent and committed and that area will reward you and show up for you. Three answers, Scout. The universe is always answering. This dude keeps putting in comments right at the perfect <laughs> time. Three answers. Yes, not yet. I have something better. So if you're putting in all that work, Scout, I would, I would remind you to look at all the blessings that have come through yeah. because of that work. And, and it's not looking like you think it should look but the universe is saying, I have something better or not yet, not just yet. You haven't been in that pot. You're, you're, being, you're cooking right now. And there's going to come a point where you come out and you're going to be this beautiful meal and everybody's going to enjoy it. And so yeah. look for the blessings that are here now. Yeah. And, and guys, this is a big thing to get to because, again, circling back to this whole thing, so many of us are trying to get there and we're mm -hmm. missing the fact that we're standing in a moment that was there last year. Oh. Like last year, we were like, if I could only be there. Yep. And now we're here. Boom. And what was there last year. No. And we're missing the celebration of what is because we're already on another there. Yep. So, Scout, for you and for anybody else, get freaking grateful about where you're at. Get clear on the blessing that you are. Get clear on how far you've actually come and how much you've actually created in the world because we're always growing. Always yeah. growing. Even if you feel like you're like... Oh, I feel like I've put on the weight again. You're still growing. You're still mm -hmm. learning. And everything is a moment to learn. Every moment is an opportunity to dive deeper into the fullest expression of who you are. So do not miss that. Do not miss that. Because you're standing in what was once there. You're already in it. You're already in the gift. You're just missing it because you're focused on something else. Yes. Boom. Okay. Guys, one more time. In case you forgot. We are the part of the child. Blue. <laughs> we'll be back next week on my channel. Yes. Share we'll this. Announce it. If you are know somebody in Australia or New Zealand, we are coming for you guys in a major way. If you're looking for some personal development stuff right now, go to the bridgemethod.org. If you are in Australia or New Zealand, go to bridgeexperience.com. Get in the game. We love you guys so much. Blessings and blessings. We just truly, truly appreciate you. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye. Boop, 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 boop. That's my boo.